Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Sandra and Michael here. We're co-authors of Game Changer, the new relationship book. Okay. So as promised, we are going to go through the different chapters. Today, it is about chapter two. And some of the feedback I got was that it was a little bit too long, chapter one. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it short and sweet so you just get a flavor of what it's about. And today, for me, this is a huge one because we're talking about chapter two, which is about personal power, boundaries, and self-mastery. Okay. And um, so, Michael, do you want to maybe read that? I think the first, that little uh, thing that Leo Tzu, Tzu says at the center of your being, do you want to read that? I think that's a really important one. That encompasses everything. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are and what you want. Leal to zoo. And I think that is a defining thing because too many people don't take the time to really get their own personal power before they jump into a relationship. So then they don't have the power, so they are always controlled or overpowered by the other, whether it be a man or a woman. Okay. So the very first thing we've talked about in there is being your own generator. And what does that mean to you, Sandra? I want to know, because we've had some discussions, and you have a pretty clear, defined um, idea of what a generator means. Well, and, and I think it's really cool because you were the one that came up with the term generator, and we actually have a little diagram in there. So when you are your own generator, which eventually you have to become, you were raised, you were dependent as a child. To me, uh, the work of a parent is to help that person become independent. So they get away from the in being dependent. So in order to be a generator, that means you have to take care of yourself and in all aspects. So that means that you need to be able to know what you do every day you know, how to eat, how to cook, how to take care of a home, how to do everything. But in order to do that, you need to have a career or finances to do that. So that means you need to be able to stand on your own two feet financially, physically, emotionally, okay? And we have a lot of challenges with the world right now. I've just joined a new organization, a world, new organization on world transformation. And we have a lot of challenges with our young people, a lot of depression, a lot of suicide, a lot of things, because they've never been taught to stand on their own two feet, okay? And to find your worth. So when we talk about personal power, when I think about power, how worthy am I? How confident am I to do what I do? What value am I in society? And can I do it? Okay. And in order to do it, it's like a child. You can't make them walk. They're going to fall. They're going to do whatever they eventually walk. So to me, the first thing of personal power is I can walk in this world by myself. I can do it. Okay. That's for me, personal power. Now, what, how do you feel? We'll take it one by one because that's personal power. Then we'll do boundaries and then we'll do mastery. Well, to me, it, it's in order to be an optimal generator, I think your um, health, your emotional, spiritual, physical health and well-being are, are primary. Because I think if you start out without um, those pieces in place, um, they become the priority. Because if you're physically unable to get up the stairs, well, limits you in so many ways your ability to move about the world take certain kinds of work everything becomes about your inability to move properly okay um if you're an emotional wreck it's probably debilitating you know at some point some fashion um moving forward becomes difficult in your life right creating forward momentum right and we all know or at least i've learned maybe perhaps we don't all know but i've learned you know over the the last several years that 
uh, being connected spiritually. If, if you're not, it seems to me like you're, you're, you're swimming against the current. It's hard to generate. You can do it, but you're really swimming against the current or you're biking into the wind. Since I found a, a spiritual connection combined with a, emotional stability and physical health and well-being, it feels like I'm, uh, I've got the current behind me or the wind at my back when I'm biking. So um, I believe that that's where it needs to start. Determine what the input of your generator requires so that you can create the output that you desire. Yeah, I think, yeah, that, that's good. For the simple reason that as you're talking, I'm thinking of the number eight, which I'm really excited about my new website that will be out soon, is that it's about finding balance. And so it's finding balance in the spiritual or non-physical world, and then finding balance in the physical and material world. And so you're looking at it from a health and emotional point of view. And so when I say that, I look at it from, I take care of myself physically, financially, emotionally, because then you're walking and you're walking with spirit as opposed to ego. We can bring that whole thing in now. When we're ego, it's like, okay, I'm living in a virtual reality. I want to do this. Well, it's not working. So when you start walking with spirit, all kinds of synchronicities help you. You get the job you need, you have the money you need, and that's personally, not as a couple. That's when we talk about personal power. Each individual has to find that within themselves, okay? And I think that's where it starts. Now we're gonna move on to once we have our personal power and we're our own generator, then we're going to have to look at personal boundaries, okay? And what is a personal boundary for you, Michael? Boundaries are, over the years, what allowed me to maintain my sanity, have my safe space. Um, they were guidelines for how I could move through this world gracefully without being overwhelmed by the people, the hubbub, the, the traffic, the energy, the, you name it, that's coming at you, you're being bombarded, the news, the, it's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with, a lot of information we have to deal with. So I set up uh, boundaries for myself, even within my family, right, so that I could maintain some sense of order, some sense of control at certain points in my life, right? What do they mean to you, Sandra? Well, boundaries to me are that... It's, it's for me to be able to hold my energy because I have a lot of energy and people like my energy, okay? And I am of service. That's what I came here. That's, that's my big mission. So the bottom line is when I get out of balance, I'm giving too much. So boundaries to me are any kind of relationship and everything in life is relationships, okay? and we are energy beings. So whether in a personal relationship, uh, an intimate relationship, relationship with my children, relationship with my work, relationship with my money, I have to have my boundaries so that I can keep myself healthy, both in body, mind, and spirit, okay? And so boundaries is a huge thing right now. Okay, so there's where I will always look, and I know a lot of people have a hard time with that because I'm pretty defined in, in energy is somebody's usually a host and somebody's a parasite. And the parasite sucks energy from the host. And so what happens, the, the host gets tired, their energy goes down, their money goes down, everything goes down. So you know how you're doing in your world if you look at yourself physically, emotionally, financially, where you are. I mean, these things don't lie. All the spirituality in the world is one thing, but we live in third dimension. We've moved to the fifth, but this is what we have to look at. What are we manifesting? Okay. And so that's personal boundaries. And so we have a section in there that we talk about and give advice on, or at least create awareness to, 
uh, to help the individual, the individual reader. We have material boundaries, we have physical boundaries, mental intellectual boundaries, sexual boundaries, and spiritual boundaries. Right. And there's information and guideline in each one under each of those headings. Right. And I think the big thing here, I just look, because one of the sidebars is called detachment. And, and it's really interesting because people will say, well, if you're detached, then you're not a part of. Attachment is when we have this codependence. Okay, our hands are together. When we are detached, that's when we have our own personal boundary and we're not in, there's a lot of family dysfunction at all different levels, work dysfunction. You have to be able to be detached in order to be able to help other people or else you're the enabler, okay? So I think that's good. Now mastery is something I've worked on all of my life. Even when I was a teenager, I mean, coming as a young person, it was, I always was the one that had to take care of myself, which is a really good thing, okay? I couldn't depend on anyone, okay? And so mastery is, is a very important aspect and personal mastery. And of course, in the personal destiny cards, we look at what the king of spades and the queen of spades as you become the master of your own life. And so it's really interesting because people will jump, okay, I'm going to go to this philosophy. I'm going to go here. I belong to this church. I'm, I'm now going to eat all this kind of food. I'm going to do this. So you're not a master, okay? You just jump all over. And that's the big thing about diet books because nobody is really confident or a master of what they need to eat or how they need to take care of themselves. So they jump to, oh, this is a new one. Now we got the keto diet. Now we got this diet. Now we got that. For me, self-mastery is I'm strong in what I need to do. I can find my balance, okay? What do you think about for self-mastery? Um. I think to me, self-mastery becomes um, relevant when you're able to um, create some self-awareness. Look at yourself. Create that relationship with self. Look inside and, and create inner growth. Find those things that most interest you. In my case, it's been um, a lifetime of physical movement which I believe I have a certain amount of self-mastery over that. I believe that it has allowed me to um, move through life, take on any challenge that's come my way, and to remain um, sick and injury-free, okay? So I've come to, uh, that's a part of it. And now the next part of my life is moving forward with the spiritual part, which now I've really got to go inside, find my connection. And I believe that that ultimately will be the strongest form of self-mastery. Okay. okay. So that's what I can say at the moment, this moment in my life. I'll so I'm going to ask you a question. So you've worked hard all your life. Have you had anyone take care of you financially or have you done that all your life? I've had the ability to um, generate my own income, create my own uh, lifestyle, uh, throughout my lifetime. No one's right. ever given me uh, 10 cents, right? Right. So that, again, is part of self-mastery. And again, that is what you're talking is, is kind of ethereal, other than the physical. You can take care of yourself. You can walk. You're functional, that type of thing. And the other part of it is I can do all that, but I also can take care of my own personal needs. I can put a roof over my head. I can feed myself. I don't rely on anyone else to do it because when you're in a relationship and you don't have self-mastery you don't have personal power so then you're subjected to whatever the person um there's a saying who who he who has the gold has the power and i see that in a lot of relationships okay that somebody likes to be the the controller because they're the one that has the money okay and in a lot of cases that's what happens to females 
okay? They, they allow themselves to be in that position so that they cannot express their true authenticity or really do what they need to do. So I think and that that's ultimately leads to resentment over the course of a relationship and probably leads to, um, you know, potential separation, you know, 20 years, 30 years down the road because it builds yeah. up over time, right? Right. But I can see both sides because the host gets tired of the energy vampire or the parasite because that's where if we now end this one that we started with self mastery or no, we started with personal power. Then we boundaries, then we went, right. Then we went to self mastery. So if we go back, self mastery is going to be attained when you have your personal boundaries and those personal boundaries come from personal power. Okay. And so I think that's it. And I hope everyone has a copy of the book, Game Changer. And if you don't, you can go, you can find it on YouTube. You can get it in Chapters Indigo. You can order it online from Amazon or Friesen. And it is now available in audio. And if you would like, you could tell us what you think about. Um, or if you have any questions, you can put them on the uh, comment section about what your um, perception of personal mastery is. And thank you so much and be ready next week. We're gonna do chapter three. That's best friend, lover, and the benefits of a lifetime relationship partnership. Perfect. Okay, thank you.